In the recent movie Dune, directed by Denis Villeneuve, the voice is a superhuman power used by the Bene Gesserit to control people. Similar to how in Star Wars, Jedis use Jedi mind tricks to get people to do what they want by ordering them to do it. As George Lucas has read Dune and was inspired by it, it's a commonly held belief that the Jedi mind tricks in Star Wars were directly taken from the voice in Dune, which came much earlier. I'm going to show you the voice in a movie scene and then do a reading of the same scene from the book and we'll discuss the difference. Here's the movie scene. In the book, here is the text for the same scene, which you will see does not show the voice as superhuman, but actually very human. Here's the scene. Jessica twisted her neck, spat out the gag. She pitched her voice in low, intimate tones. Gentlemen, no need to fight over me. At the same time, she writhed sinuously for Kinnett's benefit. She saw them grow tense, knowing that in this instant they were convinced of the need to fight over her. Their disagreement required no other reason. In their minds, they were fighting over her. She held her face high in the instrument glow to be sure Kinnett would read her lips, said, You mustn't disagree. They drew farther apart, glancing warily at each other. Is any woman worth fighting over? she asked. By uttering the words, by being there, she made herself infinitely worth their fighting. Paul clamped his lips tightly closed, forced himself to be silent. There had been the one chance for him to succeed with the voice. Now, everything depended on his mother, whose experience went far beyond his own. Yeah, Scarface said. No need to fight over. His hand flashed towards the pilot's neck. The blow was met by a splash of metal that caught the arm and in the same motion slammed into Kinnett's chest. Scarface groaned, sagged backwards against his door. Thought I was some dummy didn't know that trick, Gigo said. He brought back his hand, revealing the knife. It glittered in reflected moonlight. Now for the cub, he said, and leaned towards Paul. No need for that, Jessica murmured. Gigo hesitated. Wouldn't you rather have me cooperative, Jessica asked. Give the boy a chance. Her lip curled in a sneer. Little enough chance he'd have out there in that sand. Give him that and, she smiled, you could find yourself well rewarded. Gigo glanced left, right, turned his attention to Jessica. I've heard me what can happen to a man in this desert, he said. Boy might find the knife a kindness. Is it so much I ask, Jessica pleaded. You're trying to trick me, Gigo muttered. I don't want to see my son die, Jessica said. Is that a trick? Gigo moved back, elbowed the door latch. He grabbed Paul, dragged him across the seat, pushed him half out the door and held the knife poised. What'll you do, cub, if I cut your bonds? He'll leave here immediately and head for those rocks, Jessica said. Is that what you'll do, cub? Gigo asked. Paul's voice was properly surly. Yes. The knife moved down, slashed the bindings of his legs. Paul felt the hand on his back to hurl him down onto the sand. Fainda lurched against the doorframe for purchase, turned as though to catch himself, lashed out with his right foot. In depicting the voice as a superhuman power, the movie loses something important in the message of the book. In the book, an ancient war was fought because humans invented artificial intelligence, which resulted in the regression of human intelligence, so that humans became closer to basic animals. In this scene in which the Reverend Mother tests Paul with his response to pain, the movie references this. An animal caught in a trap will gnaw off its own leg to escape. What will you do? In the book, Paul asks, 
Why do you test for humans? To set you free, she answered. Free? Once men turned their thinking over to machines in the hopes that this would set them free, but that only permitted other men with machines to enslave them. Thou shalt not make a machine in the likeness of a man's mind, Paul quoted. Right out of the Butlerian Jihad in the Orange Catholic Bible, she said. But what the O.C. Bible should have said is, Thou shalt not make a machine to counterfeit a human mind. The Great Revolt took away a crutch, she said. It forced human minds to develop. Schools were started to train human talents. Bene Gesserit schools? Paul asked. The Bene Gesserit mission is to re-establish human consciousness and self-control that was lost because of our use of artificial intelligence that made us regress. Their mission is to give humans once again the ability to imagine and create, to see the past, present, and future by imagining the future and planning it. They use emotion and observation to manipulate others in a way that is familiar to us today, but unfamiliar to the future people who have devolved into dumb animals. What makes reading Dune the book special is that by portraying human imagination and emotion as the superpower, you get to experience an alternative universe and see humans as magicians. Like suddenly you get to be an ancient human at the dawn of civilization and regard our abilities with mysticism, seeing these things for the first time while they are distinct and not taken for granted. The movies, I believe, by making superpowers look like superpowers, loses this effect and becomes merely a spectacle. I think it would be a shame if the movies only deliver a superhuman hero rather than a hero who is quite simply human once again. Next, I'm going to do a video about Bird Box and how it deals with the perception of religion in our modern societies. Thanks for listening, and I hope you'll like this video and let me know what you think in the comments. See you next time.